you went into it wide-eyed and excited, and then you saw the movie. <laughs> and as they say in the hood, oy vey. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to go back to this side here. Uh, so, why is Tom Holland an asshole? <laughs> Very good question. <laughs> Very good question. Uh, no, all jokes aside, he's not. We just make fun of each other all the time. <laughs> all the time. And it's fun. It's fun. Um, it's fun. He's an asshole because he lives with his mom. Everybody knows that, right? Tom Holland lives at home. <laughs> <laughs> next question then. It uh, looks like a Peggy Carter that lives at home. Hi. Sleeps in his like little twin bed. <laughs> with pit posters of Justin Timberlake on the wall. <laughs> Such a nerd. <laughs> Hello, beautiful lady. actors of colour in the MCU, what do you think that big companies like Marvel and DC can do to improve representation in their superhero films, basically? Ah, yeah. <laughs> what sound did you do? <laughs> Wait, did I... I heard you, like, moan and then people clap. <laughs> did I... Did you hear that? I did, yeah. Okay. All right. Alright, it sounded like a, a dying llama. <laughs> Everybody was like, yeah, kill that llama! <laughs> um, well, I think uh, Ma Ma DC and Marvel have made huge strides, uh, unlike any other part of the uh, film business, to diversify their portfolio. I think if you look at just everything that they've done on television, everything that they've done on film, there's been multiple shows that have had female leads. I mean, Miss Haley Atwell is here today, and she was the lead of all those shows. Um, if you look at what, what they're doing with Black Panther, what they're doing with my character, if you looked at the amount of women and uh, minorities that they've put to the forefront of those two uh, universes, I think they've set a precedent that the rest of Hollywood and the film business should get behind. Thank you. I'm sorry you killed that mama. <laughs> Have we got an insight here? Yeah, um, linking to the earlier question from the other guy, um, both Falcon and Bucky have been Captain America at one point. Which one of those would you want to see in the MCU? You're asking me <laughs> if I want him or me to be Cap. <laughs> That's a hard question. <laughs> Um, you know, it's interesting. I, it's, it's funny because those would be very different caps. I would be very interested to see what Bucky would uh, look like as Cap, because uh, I know the Falcon as Cap would be extremely different. So it's all about your taste. Um, it's all about what type of Cap you're interested in seeing. Like, you know, Pierce Brosnan as James Bond, as opposed to David Craig. <laughs> David Craig is a very different Bond. A lot of this. <laughs> Pierce Brosnan was a funny bond. A lot of this. <laughs> you know? Who else can make this line work? In the history of film, I thought Christmas only came once. <laughs> Best line of all time. Pierce Brosnan nailed it. That's all I got to say. Do you want Pierce Brosnan or Daniel Craig? <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Thanks very much. How would your James Bond be then if you... Oh man, my James I'm glad you asked. Because <laughs> I've thought about this a lot. <laughs> my, uh, my James Bond would be cool. I mean, milky, smooth, smooth. No, no nonsense, no pretense. You know what I mean? Yep. Straight up on the hip all day. Black on black on black, down low 20 inch rim. <laughs> Ass. Nice. Six by nine, pump, 808 in the trunk. Drop top. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm sold. <laughs> what I just said was my James Bond would be a very, very mellow man with the ladies. He would be very aggressive in his fighting style. And his Aston Martin would be a convertible on 20 inch reds with the 808 sound system in the trunk so you can hear him coming. <laughs>
That's my thought. <laughs> I didn't think it would be reaction to that. That's it, that's it, that's it. Converted words. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go over to this question here. Um, I'm going to say excluding Falcons. Uh, excluding Falcons. Now, for uh, all the characters you've played, who's been the most interesting? Uh, Great question. Uh, I did this uh, movie, uh, actually it's weird because I watched it last week in my uh, hotel. I did this movie called We Are Marshall where I played this character, Nate Ruffin. And We Are Marshall is a story of the 1972 uh, Marshall football team, uh, college football team coming back from a game and the team crashed and killed uh, 75 people. Uh, football team members, uh, coaches, and uh, boosters, and uh, university staff. And it, we shot in Huntington, West Virginia, at the university. At the u <laughs> at the university. <laughs> and um, it was a harrowing experience. It was it was humbling uh, to see, you know, damn near 40 years later, how this community was still affected by this crash. Um, and, you know, to meet his family and how so many people were still holding on to the legacy of these people that they lost on this crash. It's been pretty tough. Though. It was very tough. It was very tough. But the great thing about it is the movie was able to help them move on from it, like closure. Um, but it was a hard movie to shoot. What was it like from then finding out that, that they'd used that in a really cathartic way? Uh, it was humbling. I mean, you know, as an actor, as anything, you don't know how your your work affects people. As a creator, you don't, when you put it out in the ether, you don't know how people will receive it. So to know that it was received and uh, digested in a way that it, it helped them live a better life, it was very, it was very humbling, and it made me take focus and appreciate more what I'm able to do as an artist. And now we move to this side. Uh, okay. Good uh, question. Uh, I have a question and a request. So the question is, if you had to pick... <laughs> I can't, I can't pick. <laughs> okay, so if you had to pick to bully either Tom Holland or Paul Rudd, who would you pick? Because I went to school with Tom Holland, he didn't seem that bad. <laughs> Next, I'm going to answer your request by answering the next question. 
is so excited. I've been waiting. I've been waiting to do my British accent in a room full of pretty people. Come on. Let's do it. Oh, this Probably is Chris Evans. If you're actually. recording this, this is for Chris Evans. Y'all just make fun of my British accent. He's an asshole. All right, here we go. First up, I'd just like to say that I'm, of course, a boxer man. It's got to be boxer. See? What accent is that? What is what language is that? I'm telling you, Sean, I'll do it. I'll take the choice. First, I'd like to say that I am a boxer man too. I'm, I'm all behind that. Um, but... <laughs> oh, okay, good, good. I need a translator. <laughs> um, you've obviously done a lot of serious roles. Um, have there been any roles that have really, like, really got to you because of either research or like seeing the situations you have to act out? Mm. Well... <laughs> uh, sorry. Well, a, a role that, uh, that, that really excites me was when I played Dr. Um, something I, I think might be, uh, it, it, it touched me a uh, hole in my heart. Hold <laughs> it, hold it, hold it, hold it! In your face, man, in your face! Uh, now I'm about to mess it up. <laughs> uh, no, it was um, when I did uh, All the Way, uh, and I played Martin Luther King uh, with Brian Cranston. It was, a, it was a humbling experience. I think in 2017, we don't understand uh, the mentality or mindset of people just simply trying to survive 50 years ago. Um, and to, be, to have to go back to that, to have to look at the uh, physical abuse and uh, mental trauma that people went through and were expected to deal with and move on was, uh, was very, very humbling. And I think when you look at people today, there's an aspect of PTSD involved in that. Uh, there's an aspect of uh, paranoia and sickness involved in that. Um, so it, uh, it really changed my perspective and my view on uh, the world around me, but humbled me to realize how lucky I am and how fortunate I am to have kids and raise them without that ignorance and hatred in their heart. I couldn't say all that with a British accent. I was like, yeah, yeah, come on. Hi, um, I wanted to ask. What made you, what inspired you to pursue acting as a career, especially when it's such a hard industry to break into and be successful in? Well, you have to ask yourself a question. Do you want to be a working actor or do you want to be a celebrity? Those are two very different things. When I said, when I decided to be an actor, I wanted to be a working actor. I wanted to do theater. I wanted to do plays. I was doing workshops and stuff like that. I wasn't, I didn't get into it to be in movies. I didn't get into it to be Falcon. Uh, that's why, you know, I went to drama high school. I went to Juilliard uh, for drama. I was discovered doing theater in New York. So it's different when you get into it, you're like, I want to be famous. Because you'll never, it, it's hard to attain an unattainable dream. Uh, celebrity is not a human emotion. Like, I didn't get into the business saying I wanted to be famous. I got into the business saying I wanted to be happy. And acting made me happy. So even if I wasn't in any of these movies and I was doing a play in, you know, Weldonshire or somewhere, <laughs> that's, that's a real place, um, I would be happy because I love acting. I don't love the idea of being a celebrity. So um, I pursued the, the craft of acting as opposed to the ridiculousness of celebrity. Thank you. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here we go, here we go. What's up, little man? No? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about the Bible. No, So when the wings come out, my jetpack flies. 
But if I don't have the wings, I will plummet to the earth <laughs> and land hardly. Does that answer your question, little man? Yes. <laughs> First of all, since we're all doing accents up in here, let me uh, take my turn to do one. Let me tell you something about this man. His real name's not Anthony, his real name's Clarence. What? Are you drunk? <laughs> you went to Cranberry. That's a private school. <laughs> Everybody's like, you're drunk. He's doing the, uh, the rhyme from 8 Mile. It was one of my first movies. Starred me as Eminem. Um, you should have got an Oscar nomination because I was great as Eminem. Uh, thank you for responding to that. <laughs> Give me some fun next time. As long as you get it, that's all I'm happy. But yeah, that was the first uh, role that I saw you in, and I thought you were really great as a Papa Doc. Um, so um, obviously, you've already just said how I was working with Eminem. Um, I just wanted to know, um, where do you rank Eminem in your top five uh, rap artists, like, ever? Like, see from that film. Uh, Eminem's in my top ten, he's not in my top five. Would you, would you tell that to him in person, or...? Yeah, we've had this conversation <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, there are a bazillion rappers out there. Everybody thinks they're a rapper. You know, you go to Brixton, everybody's a rapper. <laughs> but, true story. <laughs> but, you know, M is definitely in my top 10, just because he's a lyricist. I mean, his his use of vocabulary and uh, syncopation of beats is crazy. But, you know, you look at some of the other people that have come before him, you look at Chips before him, you look at Andre 3000. You know, you look at Big L. I mean, you look at Tupac. I mean, there are some MCs out there, you know, if you haven't heard of Rock him. Google it. Look it up. I know my history. The man kind of invented rhyming. <laughs> Next. Um, I mean, simple and plain, quiet is kept. KRS One. I mean, Buster Rhymes. We talk about people who have careers over 30 years. Fair so enough. he's in my top 10. He's in my top 10. That's great. Thanks again for talking to me. But Rakim, dog, if you don't know Rakim... I do know him. I do know him. I just thought you'd have more of a connection with Eminem after right. meeting him and seeing his media. Yeah, right I, 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 could, I could work with you and I think you'd have... No, I'm not. <laughs> so you're first? Okay. Yeah, I respect that. Thanks. Congrats on everything. Thanks, baby. I appreciate it. And then we're going to go to this side. Um, hello. Um, this is a top of our question. Um, first of all, Anthony, I just wanted to know, so since you've been in this business all this time, obviously you went to drama school, judo, so how has the business evolved in your eyes until what it is today? What have you noticed, the changes and everything and that? And the second question, part of the question is, how have you found, obviously, playing a falcon who's brought you into the fantasy comic world, and how have you found the loyalty of the cypher general fan, which is quite immense, usually? Um, I just want to see your opinion on that, for real. Um, wait, are you... I think I understand what you're asking. Um, so no, one? No, no, no. The playing Falcon hasn't brought me into the comic book world at all. I still, I literally have somebody tell me, who, like, I have no idea, I can't, I don't read comic book, I have no idea. You bring up Minecraft, I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't read comic books or anything at all. Like, now, if it's some Powerpuff Girls, we can go at it. <laughs> but, first of all, who's the new Powerpuff Girl with the blue hair? Who's that? Good. No one knows. Because <laughs> um, I love the blossom bubbles and buttercup. Um, the, uh, no, but I'm old school. I mean, I grew up on cartoons, you know, Tom and Jerry and all that. I never got into comic books. And it's funny now that people say, oh, I used to read all the comic books. I'm like, that's funny, because if everybody read comic books, why did all the comic book stores go out of business? <laughs> you know what I mean? So being Falcon hasn't gotten me into comic books or any of that stuff at all. I appreciate it. But, uh, no, I can, that Japanime and all that stuff, I'm like, oh, I can't. I do not understand any of it. Um, and the business has changed that I've been in it. 
because it used to be um, people, going to the movies used to be an experience. It used to be a family affair. It used to be an event. Whereas now, you know, if people will go see movies just because they said it's going to be number one, and everybody know the movie's bad. You know, you'll read a review on Rotten Tomatoes and be like, oh, they gave it, you know, 75% tomatoes. It's fresh. I should go see it. <laughs> when they haven't even seen a movie. You know, so the, the evolution of the business has gone to, like, there are no movie stars anymore. Like, Anthony Mackie isn't a movie star. The Falcon is a movie star. And that's what's weird. It used to be with Tom Cruise and Will Smith and Stallone and Schwarzenegger. When you went to the movies, you went to go see the Stallone movie. You went to go see the Schwarzenegger movie. Now you go see X-Men. So the, the, the evolution of the superhero has meant the death of the movie star. And that's the fear now, because you're now making movies for 16-year-olds and China. <laughs> and that's it. You think of some of your favorite movies growing up, those movies wouldn't get made today. Goonies? Wouldn't get made today. Halloween? Wouldn't get made today. Thing? Wouldn't get made today. <laughs> and all of them you want. You watch Stranger Things on Netflix. Has anybody ever seen Stranger Things? <laughs> Stranger Things is Goonies. He's yeah, yeah. everything. It's, it's Goonies. Three kids go on a mission on the underground. There's an alien. Kill the alien. Goonies. <laughs> Even when they found the little dark world where the alien was, they went down the slide like, Ooh, Goonies. <laughs> so it's just it's a different time now. The business, they make movies for specific uh, audiences as opposed to just making good movies. And that's why people stop going to the movies because most of the movies suck. Well, it's, um, it's funny because they say it's the golden age of television and a lot of actors now are ductating between it. It was itself, you did the, is it HBO? Mm -hmm. Mark and um, Luther for King film. So is, is that going to continue? Like, oh, of course. Actors dovetailing? Like, no, of course, because movies, movies cost too much now. So in order to do it, you have to do it on TV yeah. because there are, too, there are so many outlets. It don't make sense to put it in a movie theater because, you know, Popcorn is so much. I mean, you take, I take my kids to the movies to see Avengers. It's $150. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even want to see myself that much. <laughs> you know, whereas I have a great sound system in my house with a great TV. I have my own popcorn maker. I got my own cabinet with my in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I can sit here for $8 and watch this movie, just like I'm in a the movie theater, pause it, freshen my, and come right back to it. So why go to the movies? So it's the, it's the cycle, the evolution of not, on, not only filmmaking, but the education of the film going populace that has evolved. Thank you. Okay. Can you, can you make sure you you mentioned there several kind of 80s great movies and things like that were brought up there. If you could protect one 80s movie and or, or favorite movie was and stop it being remade so that you could forever have that original one, which movie would you make? Just every movie. Just <laughs> stop remaking movies. <laughs> Just, you know, stop. Um, of course, uh, like Scarface, Godfather, uh, Platoon, uh, Smokey and the Bandit, great movie. Burt Reynolds, Harry Chess, can't beat it. Um, ooh, Steel Magnolias. Don't remake that with a bunch of twenty-one-year-old girls. They can't. They can't do that. You know, they, they don't have the experience. Ooh, wait a minute. Uh, great movie though. Uh, Coming to America, best movie ever made. Um, but anything Eddie Murphy has done before The Golden Child. <laughs> anything before The Golden Child, protect it, put it in a vault, never remake it. Sounds good to me. And we've got 
at least time for a couple more questions, so we're going to start. We're going to burn through yeah. these. I'm getting to watch this. Go. Hello. So, um, straight away from Phil a little bit, what would you say is like a recommended pickup line? <laughs> recommended pickup line? So, check it out. This is, this is a good one, all right? So, you know, everybody's out there on their phones and stuff like that. So, if you see a girl on a phone, I don't know what you use to pick up dudes. I don't know. But, you can use this on a dude, all right? So if a girl is sitting down and texting on her phone, you go over to her and say, hey, hey, stop texting me. People are watching. <laughs> <laughs> then she's like, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, how's it going? You know? Because they just want to see your personality. They want to know that you're not a cuckoo. <laughs> as soon as a girl thinks you're not a cuckoo, you're in. And with dudes, as soon as well, if you say hello to a dude, you're in. That's just, we're so excited for a girl to say one word to us. It's like, hi, hello! That's it. So is this the kind of advice you'll be giving Tom Holland then? <laughs> no, he's a, no, he's awful with, no. <laughs> that dude couldn't pick up a girl with a trunk. <laughs> he's awful, he's awful. Awful. I go over to Teddy here. <laughs> that worked, see? <laughs> I was like, yeah! <laughs> Major inspiration to me. Um, just make me feel like I can go do something. Go instead do it, of just huh? not a nothing. Also, I have a question. My friend asked me to ask you what's Chris Evans' favorite pizza topping? <laughs> You know what? That guy likes a pepperoni pizza. Right, she told me if you didn't say Sebastian's down, I have to like punch you or something. Wait, his favorite pizza topping is Sebastian Stan? I don't know. Too kinky. I know. I like it, I like it. I like it. We can go there, alright. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm mopping what you're spilling, baby. I'm mopping what you're spilling. I like it. Thank you. No problem. This guy here. This is the guy with the coolest t-shirt at this whole con. Everybody find out where he bought it and kick one. Because I'm gonna kick one. <laughs> Who's your favorite Avenger and who is, who is the strongest? Who I think is the strongest? Huh? Yeah. Uh, my favorite Avenger is the Incredible Hulk, of course. Uh, and he's definitely the strongest because they had to make the Hulk buster and he couldn't bust him. <laughs> Gangster. <laughs> and he's green. You can't be, well, you can be green with blue. <laughs> green is a close set. Green is a close set. Hulk is the strongest Scarlet Witch is. Who? Scarlet Witch. You're drunk. <laughs> Who else? Hey, that little man, what's up? You there, Sire? Squire? Is it Squire? Sire was best. Sire? <laughs> Great question, young man. Well asked. Uh, no. <laughs> I have a great stuntman that looks just like me. And it's literally like a cartoon. I do this, and they say, cut! And he comes in, I walk out, and he jumps off the building. And I'm like, good for you. <laughs> Everyone has a job to do. Let that man do his job. I'm not here to do his job. <laughs> That's how you break. You got yeah, winter, so Can you move your seat up? What? <laughs> so, my question is, what was it like filming? Uh, sorry, forgotten. <laughs> what was it like filming? There's only like a few movies you can finish that sentence. I'm sure you can figure it out. What was it like with three people in the in the Volkswagen? Beautiful scene. Have you ever been in a Volkswagen? They're very small. Right, they're very small. And all of us are like between 5'11 and 6'1. So how did it all fit? It did. <laughs> it was the funny thing about the Volkswagen, so that little car is the best piece of crap on earth. So sometimes the door will fly open. Like, oh, this is a funny blooper. Um, when we were shooting um, Civil War, 
we were driving the Volkswagen up the ramp in the garage to go meet Paul Rudd and everybody. So we turn the curb and the door flies open. <laughs> and Chris can't get the car in gear. So we're headed at the wall at like 20 miles an hour. <laughs> so Chris and I are about to jump and like leave Sebastian in the car. <laughs> Like each man for himself, no. <laughs> Good buddy, he got the car stopped, but Sebastian wasn't very happy. It was, you know, I'm like, you got the back seat, dog. That's, that's kind of how it goes. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, two more. We gotta do one more. One more. Come on, come on. Well, well, I was wondering if you could have any weapons on your armor. Ooh. What would it be? See, how do you not get that question? <laughs> uh, you know, if I could have any weapon, I would have a killer sound system in my <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that? Me flying up and playing like Prince? <laughs> you know what I mean? Playing like Michael Jackson? No. Like the Beatles? <laughs> here come on, black top, here come. That would be jamming, man. <laughs> See, see, that's Falcon's cap. That's Falcon's cap. <laughs> my, my suit is going to become like the Cadillac of flying suits. That don't mean nothing to you now, but it will in 10 years. <laughs> and you find out what a Cadillac is. Don't own all eyes on me, go get it. 
Hello. Uh, do, do you think your children respect you as an actor? Oh, I love you. Um, <laughs> They, uh, they do. They, uh, my, my son, I, okay, all right, I'm a brag. All right, I'm a brag. You ready? All right, this is what bragging looks like. So I did Sesame Street, all right? I was, I was with Cookie Monster on Sesame Street, all right? I'm bragging. And I, like, my kids saw it, like, and I wasn't home. My dad, my, my son called me and was like, Daddy, you, you know Cookie Monster. I was like, yeah, Cookie Monster's my man. And he goes, you know what, Daddy? You're the coolest daddy ever. <laughs> so, I need to just cooking on stuff. I got to hang out with cooking on stuff. Go. I, uh, I've got one question and one Hurry. request. The question Hurry. is, if you could do a rap battle again with Eminem, would you do it? Of course I would. I'm not scared of no Eminem. He can't mess with me. I'll rap so hard, he'll have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> I just went straight, <laughs> and you, were, you got nervous. <laughs> no. If you got hypothetically, uh, oh. yeah, um, after this, you got offered the part of the beast, would you take it? Ooh, beast falcon. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't because Kelsey Grammer plays the beast, and he's one of the greatest actors alive, and I love watching Kelsey Grammer act. But if Kelsey Grammer put down the mantle of Beast, I would love to be Beast. <laughs> I, would, I would also love to be Blade. If that's, <laughs> that's, my that's my thing. That's my thing. I'm just putting it out there in the ethos. Blade and Beast. Go! Um, if the Falcon had a solo movie, um, who would, um, of the Avengers, who would you want to have fight? Who, who would I want? Who, who, okay, who would you want on your team? Ooh, okay. So, I would want, um, I mean, you know. Uh, I, would, I would want Hulk, because he's smart and he's big. Um, I would want Winter Soldier, because Sebastian's my man and we can hang out when we're not working. Um, and I would want, um, Colby Smolders, because I love her so much. Yeah. And she's the most talented woman on the planet. You then, Yellow Jack. I am a big fan. Thanks. I just want to ask from being a, an expired actor, how oh. old would I get an expiring actor? Oh, I was like, you're 12. How did you expire? <laughs> you a lot of life ahead of you. How did someone get into your position from going from like college and get being in your position? And, uh, take classes. I always tell people, you want to be bad in class, not when you get the job. Take classes and get all of your bad acting out. Because if you get a movie and you're bad in a movie, you will be expired. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> you there, go. Who would win in a fight? Iron Man or Falcon? Oh, uh, well, Iron Man would win because he's covered in iron. <laughs> now, if he were to take off some of that iron, and we go at it, I'm pretty sure I can give him some. But he's covered in iron. <laughs> he has surely, too many gadgets. Surely that would weigh him down, though. Sure, what? Surely that would weigh him down. No, because he flies. <laughs> so he's not that heavy. <laughs> you there, go. I know you don't know much about the Marvel comics and things. You said you didn't read them, but if you could play, what, what? if you said you could play. If you could play a different one of the Avengers, which one would you play?